Good day to you. Hope you're having a wonderful day. We've been reading in the book of Joshua. Last time we read Joshua chapter 6, and that was about the taking of Jericho. Now remember the ban on things that God told them not to take for themselves, right? Okay, because I mentioned that, and I wanted to make sure you remembered that, because here we're going to talk about someone breaking that ban in Joshua chapter 7 here. And this is Joshua chapter 7. I am reading in the Amplified Bible. But the sons of Israel acted unfaithfully and violated their obligation in regard to the things off limits under the ban, those things belonging to the Lord. For Achan, the son of Carmi, the son of Zabdi, the son of Zerah, from the tribe of Judah, took some of the things under the ban for personal gain. Therefore, the anger of the Lord burned against the Israelites. Now Joshua sent men from Jericho to Ai, which is near Beth-Avon, east of Bethel, and said to them, Go up and spy out the land. So the men went up and spied out Ai. Then they returned to Joshua and said to him, Do not make all the people go up to fight, Have only about 2,000 or 3,000 men go up and attack Ai. Do not make the entire army go up there, for they of Ai are few. So about 3,000 men from the sons of Israel went up there, but they fled in retreat from the men of Ai. The men of Ai killed about 36 of Israel's men and chased them from the gate as far as the bluffs of Shebarim, and struck them down as they descended the steep pass, so the hearts of the people melted in despair and began to doubt God's promise and became like water, disheartened. So remember that whoever broke this, which it already has told us that Achan broke broke this uh, ban, now his sin is to blame for 36 people being killed. They would not have died otherwise. Then Joshua tore his clothes and fell face downward on the ground before the ark of the Lord until evening. He and the elders of Israel, and with great sorrow, they put dust on their heads. Joshua said, Alas, O Lord God, why have you brought this people across the Jordan at all, only to hand us over to the Amorites to destroy us? If only we had been willing to live beyond the Jordan. O Lord, what can I say now that the army of Israel has turned back in retreat and fled before their enemies? For the Canaanites and all the inhabitants of the land will hear about it and will surround us and cut off our name from the earth. And what will you do for your great name to keep it from dishonor? So here... Joshua's kind of meshing two things together. He sounds a little bit like the children of Israel back under Moses, where it's like, oh, Lord, why did you bring us here just to let us die? Okay, now, that's not really a fair, totally fair reaction, but he's human, and Joshua's a great man. I'm not trying to put him down. Um, But he's human, and so he's got a little bit of that going on. But then he also does something that, Moses kind of has has done in the past, and this is because he's following Moses. Moses was a good example for him, and he's like, well, God, if you let this happen to us, then your name is going to fall into dishonor, right? Everyone will know not to follow or trust the God of Israel. It's it's kind of the idea, right? So he's that's his reaction to God, plus they did fall down on their faces. They, they put dust on their heads, right? Now let's read. God's reaction. So the Lord said to Joshua, Get up. Why is it that you have fallen on your face? Israel has sinned. They have also transgressed my covenant, which I commanded them to keep. They have even taken some of the things under the ban, and they have both stolen and denied the theft. Moreover, they have also put the stolen objects among their own things. So, Hear what God is saying, first of all. First of all, he's kind of giving Joshua a hard time because, you know, Joshua and the elders were being all dramatic. They're being all drama. Oh, you know, and they're just falling down. Had they checked with God before they even went to attack Ai, 
probably this would not have been an issue, at least not as much of an issue, but they didn't. They didn't check with God first. And then secondly, here they are having this dramatic reaction. And, and I think God is like, you know, he doesn't want the drama. He wants you to come to him and say, you know, what's wrong with me? Help, help me do better. Help fix me so that I'm following you correctly. Because obviously the problem is not with God, right? And that's kind of why God is fussing at him a little bit. The problem is not with God. The problem is with Israel. And he says that immediately. Israel has sinned, right? So there's a transgression here. Let's continue. That is why the soldiers of Israel could not stand and defend themselves before their enemies. They turned their backs and ran before them because they have become accursed. I will not be with you any more unless you destroy the things under the ban from among you. Rise up. Consecrate the people and say, Consecrate yourselves for tomorrow, for thus says the Lord, the God of Israel. There are things under the ban among you, O Israel. You cannot stand victorious before your enemies until you remove the things under the ban from among you. In the morning you shall come forward by your tribes, and it shall be that the tribe which the Lord chooses by lot shall come forward by families, and the family which the Lord chooses shall come forward by separate households, and the household which the Lord chooses shall come forward man by man. It shall be that the one who is chosen with the things under the ban shall be killed and his body burned with fire. He and all that belongs to him, because he has transgressed the covenant of the Lord, and because he has done a disgraceful and disobedient thing in Israel. Now, sorry, I got a little tickled to myself because I was having trouble saying those lines. You might notice a little edit there. Nonetheless, uh, what I do want us to see here is what God is telling Joshua. He's not just telling Joshua. He's saying, consecrate the people and tell the people. So here they are getting up. They are consecrating themselves. And Joshua is telling them all this is going to happen. So I want you to realize this is a lot of time that Achan has to come forward to confess and repent, right? This He has all this time. But see, God says they've already denied the theft up above, and I don't know what circumstance occurred there, but somehow Achan has already denied the theft. But now, with this silence here, he's reinforcing that denial. He's not. He has all this time to come forward and confess, but he's not. And he doesn't think, at least this is my thought, even though this is not spelled out specifically, but I know if it was me, if I'm standing there not saying something, I'm like, I don't think God can find me. I don't think God will catch me. I don't think God knows. So I'm going to hide out and hopefully I won't get picked, right? That's kind of the idea. So the problem with that is that God does know. And he always knows there is no secret sin with God. But that's what Achan thought. He thought he was or maybe he was just hoping to get away with it. But nonetheless, that was the wrong approach. So let's read on. So Joshua got up early in the morning and had Israel come forward by tribes. And the tribe of Judah was chosen by lot. He had the families of Judah come forward and the family of the Zerahites was chosen and he had the family of the Zerahites come forward man by man, and Zabdi was chosen. He brought his household forward man by man, and Achan, the son of Carmi, son of Zabdi, son of Zerah, of the tribe of Judah, was chosen. Then Joshua said to Achan, My son, I implore you, give glory to the Lord, the God of Israel, and give praise to him in recognition of his righteous judgments, and tell me now what you have done. Do not hide it from me. So Achan answered Joshua and said, In truth, I have sinned against the Lord, the God of Israel, and this is what I have done. When I saw among the spoils in Jericho a beautiful robe from Shinar, that southern Babylon, and two hundred shekels of silver and a bar of gold weighing fifty shekels, I wanted them and took them. Behold, they are hidden in the ground inside my tent with the silver underneath. 
And I want you to notice what he doesn't really do here, even though Joshua implored him, give glory to God. He doesn't really give glory to God. He does admit that he sinned. But I'm not sure if he really sounds as sorrowful as he should be. I, I'm i just now, I'm just taking it based off what we read here, right? So maybe I'm missing some some emotion that maybe I should be seeing, but I don't see much here. I see kind of a, well, in truth, yeah, I sinned, and yeah, you can find that stuff in my tent, you know. So this doesn't sound like a, an extreme sorrowful person, right? And he had seen what had gone on before with Joshua and the elders being sorrowful, seeing that the men of Ai had killed 36 people, and now he had been warned that all this was going to happen and that he would be found out. So Joshua sent messengers, and they ran to the tent, and they saw the stolen objects hidden in his tent with the silver underneath. And they took them from the tent and brought them to Joshua and to all the sons of Israel and spread them out before the Lord. Then Joshua and all Israel with him took Achan, the son of Zerah, the silver, the royal robe, the bar of gold, his sons, his daughters, his oxen, his donkeys, his sheep, his tent, and everything that he had. And they brought them up to the valley of Achor, disaster, Joshua said, Why have you brought disaster on us? The Lord will bring you disaster this day. Then all Israel stoned them to death with stones. Afterward, they burned their bodies in the fire. Then they piled up over him a great heap of stones that remains to this day, the day of when this was being written. Then the Lord turned from the fierceness of his anger Therefore, the name of that place has been called the Valley of Achor, disaster to this day. Now, to us, this might sound a bit extreme or harsh that all his family was also involved in this punishment. You could say, well, I could see why he would be punished, but why all his family? I think that's a valid question. But I think the answer is in the fact that all this stuff was in his tent, and it was findable. And since it was in his tent, probably all his family saw him put it in his tent and bury it because you notice it was in the ground. So I imagine that took some work and some time. So he and his family were complicit in this. At least that is my understanding and the way I see this, that he and his family were complicit in this, that they were aware and they did not all of them, by their silence, were in denial. They did not come forward and confess and repent. You know, I know it's harsh. It sounds harsh to us because of our day. But we have to remember that God was trying to establish a kingdom on earth for these people. And in establishing a kingdom, you need a chain of command. And you need to be sure that people will follow you and do what you tell them to do and obey. So. It may sound a little harsh to us, but this was the world they lived in. If they weren't going to listen and follow God correctly, then he was not going to be able to establish a kingdom for them. He was not going to be able to do any of these things that he had planned and promised them. So they needed to be in line with God, following him and doing what he said. Of course, we know the story of the children of Israel, much like our own story, we know they made a lot of mistakes, they sinned a lot, and they did a lot of wrong things. And we all do. None of us are perfect. That's why these, uh, these accounts uh, of what they went through and what they did are perfect for us to teach us these lessons that there is, there's no secret sin. God knows it all. And that we need to follow and obey God, right? And not be... Not let our temptations get the better of us. Yes, yeah, sometimes it might. Uh, and thank God we're in a better covenant, too. I just appreciate the fact that Jesus died for us and took all that sin away so that we're in such a covenant. God just wants us to come to him to confess and repent. And he forgives all of that sin that we've committed. We are in that much of a better covenant because Jesus already paid the price for all our sin. So, 
want to thank you for listening. Hope you have a wonderful day. May the Lord bless you and keep you safe. And remember, God loves you.